Hello and welcome. This is Afshin Ritansi and Yvonne Ridley joining you from on board the world's only floating TV studio moored by the River Thames in central London. At one time, the cry from Downing Street used to be prudence, but the new Prime Minister's buzzword is austerity. Either way, the message is the same. Britain is enveloped by economic decline. So exactly who is suffering? As the axe falls on jobs in the public sector, there are also fears that swinging cuts might signal the end for some of the biggest names in the media. We talk to some leading journalists on the consequences of this period of gloom and fuss. And if the stress of it is all getting too much for you, these medics have come up with a computer age cure. Instead of popping a pill, download an app. Uh, that's apparently cheaper than going to the doctors. And it's not all plain sailing for the upper classes either. Our man about town, Don Slack, went off to one of Britain's most famous social gatherings for the elite to see how the rich are coping with austerity. All of this and so much more on board HMS President with Ritansi and Ridley. Stay tuned if you want to be kept in the know. Gary Young, the Guardian newspaper's man in New York, reckons it's only a matter of time before the recession claims its first victim in the newspaper world. Here he explains his reasons. Gary, we're talking about the state of journalism today. Um, you're based in America now. What is the situation with the newspaper industry in the U.S. compared to Britain? Well, everywhere is hurting. It's a kind of a, there's a there's this global problem with newspapers, which is that never before have they had as many readers, and never have they uh, before have they had as few people paying for the stuff that they do. And um, so, in in America, we're really poised. We're waiting for the first major city to lose its newspaper altogether. There are a few um, contenders, uh, uh, Pittsburgh, um, uh, Baltimore, uh, uh, Seattle has already lost one, uh, and the other one is, is vulnerable. Um, the kind of ecology of the British newspaper industry is a bit different, because Britain is the size of Michigan, and so um, um, uh, it's more of a kind of national, much more competitive national market. and. Um, Everywhere there's massive job losses um, and um, cuts, uh, particularly uh, in areas that are deemed more expensive or less urgent, which is, f is, uh, is foreign news. But it's print media that is making the running, arguably, in the States. We had uh, Rolling Stone magazine leading to mm. that uh, resignation, mm. uh, firing of Stan McChrystal, arguably Judith Miller during the run-up to the Iraq mm. War. It is the print media rather than television in the States. Uh, that's, that's very true. The, the uh, television in the States has kind of been reduced to these um, very polarized camps, Fox, you know, MB, MSNBC, and then there's a CNN trying to kind of cut it in the middle. And it becomes a, um, either propaganda or mush, um, whereas the, <coughs> um, the press, I think, have realized that they have to do in this world of um, uh, of the web and internet and so on. They have to do something distinctive, and what they can do that's distinctive is um, is raise the bar. What's the difference between a blog and a newspaper? Well, the newspapers get checked, or well, they should get checked. Judith Miller being a good example where they don't get checked enough, um, and um, uh, they're supposed to be uh, more more thorough. Um, so there is that um, there is that possibility, but thoroughness. Checking investigations costs money. If no one's paying for the newspaper, then where's that money going to come from? So they're, uh, they're waiting for a model. They're waiting for a model to emerge. The Times has disappeared behind a paywall. What about Rupert Murdoch? I mean, this uh, program goes out on his platform, or television platform here in the UK. The power of him on both sides of the Atlantic. Well, huge. I mean, um, uh, he has uh, uh, ploughed a lot of money into the Wall Street Journal in order to challenge the New York Times as being the premier general uh, newspaper um, uh, in the country. And Fox News is massively influential. Uh, uh, I think there would still be some kind of right-wing rebellion uh, against Obama um, were it not for Fox News, but it's Fox News that nurtures it and which um, sustains it. But. Murdoch is faced with the same challenges as, as, as all of us, and uh, we see with the Times disappearing behind uh, the paywall that somehow we need to find a way 
to pay for the things that we do. And uh, since the explosion of uh, newspapers on the web, we haven't, and it's reaching a critical point. We're kind of, it's little, the newspaper industry is a little bit, at the moment, like the mining industry in the early 80s in, in, uh, in Britain. If we don't find a way to work it out soon, there's a possibility that we could disappear. The paradox is never before have more people been reading our stuff. Is our craft in decline? Uh, well, one way of looking at it is that our craft is um, is actually uh, exploding. That kind of never before have as many people been writing and videoing and. Uh, well, there's the emergence of citizen journalism. Uh, but right. you work for one of two left-wing newspapers in the UK, mm. the Daily Mirror being the other, and uh, th they're both struggling financially. Yeah, well, everybody's struggling, um, and. Um, uh, so I think w I, in this moment what we have to do is make a case for our craft. What do we do that somebody at home with a modem can't do? And sometimes the answer to that question is not pretty. Um, if, if the kind of